because I, I can't even, I don't even feel alive unless I'm out of breath. That's what I get for being a musician. I lose a pound a night on stage sweating with Aerosmith, right? I'm up there with standing next to fucking Joe Perry, really? The last of the real rock stars. You, you stood across from him. He's a bad motherfucker. I don't know if he was stoned Feels or not weird. with you, but he's... When I get text messages from him, I'm like, holy shit. Joe and Perry, I fucking... Me a text and message. I saw him in the beginning, and I knew he was that. Well, he's something special. I knew he was that. He's got a... He's got a recognizable, there's like certain people that have a sound, you know, and Joe has, he absolutely has a sound. You know who has a sound? Gary Clark Jr. Mm. Like you hear Gary Clark Jr. play guitar, you go, okay, mm -hmm. that's a Gary Clark Jr. Mm -hmm. riff. You know, there's certain people that have a sound. Joe most certainly has a sound. It's like he's expressing himself through that guitar in a very recognizable way. You know, yeah. you two together, man. What a fucking combination that was with his guitar and your voice and. But God here's but here's damn. The, and here's the trip, you know. In, in the beginning, you know, the first album, people have said, "Who's singing on the second album?" Because on the second album, I kind of sing like that, and they, you know, I kind of like that Pee Wee Herman, mm, chocolatey. I kind of fucking, <laughs> I kind of put that, I, because I want to sound black. Uh -huh. What the fuck? I'm not stupid. I get it. I wanted to put some fucking soul soul in my voice. I knew I had it. And so you tried to force it out like I, a no, baby. I, I, no, no. What I learned was, you know, like from uh, uh, Nat King Cole. This is the kind of music I listened to when I was a kid. When I met Natalie, I walked up behind her and I went, Kimo, Kimo, stare, stare. My high, my ho, my rum stick, a pump, a nickel soup, bang, nip, cat, parliament, cameo, I love you. She went, <gasps> no one has sung that ever to me except my daddy. It was said her dad passed, obviously, way before, but that's, those are the records I listened to. That was Nat singing his right. best shit. And um, so, you so wanted I wanted to, to sound, I just, well, here's what I wanted to sound. I wanted to sound more like Joe Perry was playing. Ah. And singing really sweet and nice. Listen to Dream On, it's sweet and nice. I kind of I kind of went there when we wrote a song on a waterbed. Joe Perry and I were sitting around smoking a big fatty, and um, Mark Lehman was there. He was our road manager, and we and Joe goes. I'm looking at him, and that was a sentence. He spoke to me, right? And I said, "We all live on the edge of town, where we all live in a soul around. People start coming, all we do just a grin. Say we gotta move out, go city moving in. See what I'm saying? Right. He, he, so he spoke to me, and you. I answered. Translated it. I yeah. Well, I would listen to the bit. We would sit around and we would jam. That's what we did the best, and we would create this music. And I would put the headphones on later because I'm the lyricist and I wrote the melody. I see when I heard Joe's band, I thought, I'm going to take my dad, Vic Tolerico, who went to Juilliard in New York. And I grew up in the Bronx, 5610 Netherland Avenue, 6G, the apartment. And I grew up under the piano and I listened. And my dad would practice every day on a Steinway. So who lived between the notes? Joe. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I love you, name's Joe. I just love Joe's. <laughs> Fucking love Joe Perry. <laughs> Fucking love. You know, he's my bro. You go, hey, Joe, what the fuck, man? It's always been that. So, but anyway, so I took my melody, and you know what I hear when I listen to him playing? Whoa, shit. So when you, when you guys did me. your second album, and you did that sort of affectation, is that how you would call it, of your mm. voice? Mm -hmm. Did you... After you heard it and you listened to like people talking about it, did you mm. decide to change it for the next album? Wow, that's cool. To... I did just go away for a minute, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> I love it when I do that. <laughs> yeah. The, the melody that I learned from my dad and then listening to the music we listened to, you know, Dorsey and uh, Frank Sinatra and Nat King Cole and, and then Janis Joplin and the Village Fugs. Who were the first ones to put on the back of their album, uh, Lunatic Vagina? That's who, so, who sang the song. It's 61. The Mothers of Invention. Wow. These fucking bands. And I went, what? So I thought singing really 
like my dad taught me in the notes and right on and you know c d e f g a b c you know whatever the fuck you know wrong 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 you gotta not only that but if you don't put inflections into it there ain't no feeling and there ain't no meaning i got to love you like i do last time baby whoops right you know where you say it but you have to feel it it well, can't you, be something you're trying to feel it's got to be something you actually feel does that make yeah, sense yeah but I, I think you know joe hats off to him man um the way he played his guitar and practice at night, he'd fucking nod out. He'd be sitting in his chair, and the fucking chair, the couch caught on fire. <laughs> I walked in with a pot of water. <laughs> and he's laying there, a room full of smoke. I went, Joe, what the fuck, man? And he's playing this riff, and we turned it into a song. And it, This kind of stuff happens so much. And he did it awake, too. I mean, fucking A, obviously, you know. Tom Hamilton. Sweet emotion. That, that's how a band comes together, you know? And I can't tell you any other way than that magic. And every inch of the way, the reason it doesn't feel like I'm 70 and I don't feel the time and it feels like yesterday, we just started, is because every time I'm on stage, I'm singing those same fucking songs again, same way, same feeling, same looking, same people, different people, different people, but I'm singing those same songs. Do you know the guy that's looking, so anyway, so to answer your question, second album sounds a little bit more raunchy, more in tune with Joe's guitar, and I think we found our sound, second album. Third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seven, eighth, ninth, 10, 11, 12, we got it. Right. But it took that. First album had songs on it like Walking the Dog, because we, we ran out of songs. <laughs> uh. we, that was song we played in clubs. I remember, we had a contract, what are we gonna do? So we wrote Moving Out, then the guys would get stoned and drink Boone's Farm, and i go, come on you guys, we fucking wrote this song, fuck you, and flick their joint at me. <laughs> so I remember getting pissed off walking out, they hate me when I tell this story, but I remember being really fucking angry, walking out to the piano and writing. One Way Street, um, I don't play guitar, and I wrote, bow dum 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 um, Make it, don't break it. The first song in the first album, some some great shit because I feel like you know in anger, you know I didn't know what to do, but I just but I used that. So I, I wrote a bunch of songs, and I think it lit everybody's fuse. I think that Joe certainly lit mine. Tom Hamilton in his outtakes, as he called them, sweet emotion. That's Tom Hamilton. 